Hi guys, welcome to No Culty Vibes. I'm Cassie Marie, and I talk about all things cults, pop culture, and trending topics. So if you're into the Scientology, the cult documentaries, the celebrity cult members, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more culty content. In this video, I am starting a really exciting series with one of my best friends who doesn't know like anything about Scientology. She's never seen Leah Remini's Scientology in the aftermath. All she knows is like a very small amount of things that she's seen in my content or like things I've told her in passing, but she doesn't know what they believe. She doesn't know about a lot of the harms and abuses. So we are going to slowly work our way through explaining Scientology to her as someone who knows next to nothing about it. This conversation was so fun to have. This first one is just a brief overview of Scientology. We weren't able to get like super deep into any of these specific topics, but each of the things we talk about is going to get its own deep dive. We're going to talk about the beliefs, L. Ron Hubbard, David Miscavige, where is Shelly, all of the different abuses, the Sea Org. We're going to talk about it all, but this is the introduction. I hope if you know next to nothing about Scientology, this gives you a little bit of context as to why we're doing things like protesting and calling out the harms and calling it a cult. And I hope you stick around to learn more. If you love this series or really enjoy this conversation and have any questions or comments or things to add or things you think we should cover, please comment below. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Or you can email me at nocultyvibes at gmail.com. Quick disclaimer, I am not an ex-Scientologist, so I don't have direct experience in this topic. I am a cult enthusiast, I guess. Leah Remini's Scientology in the Aftermath series is what helped me deconstruct and realize the culty relationships and groups that I was part of in my life. And Scientology just fascinates me endlessly. So I've just researched a lot of this stuff, consumed a lot of content about this. I have ex-Scientology friends that have explained a lot of things to me. So I am coming also from an outsider's perspective, not from direct experience, but I am going to be bringing in ex-Scientologists that later in the series that are going to be able to explain things more in depth to me and my friend Courtney. So there's so much more to come. A couple of quick housekeeping things before we get started. I just hit 100,000 followers on TikTok. I am so excited. I can't believe it. This has been such a huge milestone for me and something that I never really expected to happen. But now that it has, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. If you have TikTok and you're not following me over there yet, you can find me at the Cassie Marie or No Culty Vibes. If you search either of those, you should find my TikTok. Also, I put these videos, recordings on YouTube and my podcast. So if you are watching on YouTube and you prefer just to listen, you can find my podcast, No Culty Vibes. If you found me on the podcast and you're listening and you prefer to watch some of these things, then go ahead over to YouTube. Make sure you subscribe both places. Okay, here we go. Here's my conversation with Courtney explaining what even is Scientology? What do they believe? Okay, so I have a list of things I want to tell you okay. for this episode. Okay. And it's a very basic Scientology overview. I know nothing about like where Scientology comes from. Like nothing. Like nothing. What do you know about Scientology? I know that it's a celebrity cult. That yeah. they like celebrities. Mm -hmm. I know that it's very expensive for everybody in it. Yeah. And I know that it's like, it feels like an MLM. Yeah. To me. Yeah. And that's like kind of it. I know about the Danny Masterson stuff. But yeah. I don't relate that as much to Scientology yeah. for some reason. Yeah, I think when a lot of people who talk about Scientology regularly are exposing things, it's not really about, like, the beliefs. Yeah. And, like, who founded it so it doesn't get talked about. No, I don't know that. So, so many people don't know, like, anything, anything like, about the what other they day, actually I think do. you said something about the person who's in charge of it now is, like, not the person. It's, like, not the person who founded it. Right. Because that person died. Right. Right? Yeah. Do I know these people's names? No. Perfect. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> the other weird thing about Scientology when you're trying to explain it to somebody is there's Scientology's version okay. of what Scientology is and what they believe. 
And then there's like the actual version in practice, what it looks like that X, usually like X Scientologists are like, yes, Scientology says this, but they actually make us do this. And then there's like the harms and the extreme version okay. of what that looks like. So it's not so it's all very layered. the extreme. No, no, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. I think well, I've, I've only really heard of that too. Right. Cause I haven't seen the like Mia Rimini documentary. That's I didn't crazy. see that. <laughs> I didn't see, there was another docuseries. Going clear. I didn't see that. that. That's a documentary, like a full length documentary. Okay. I did not see that. Yeah. I haven't, yeah, nothing. No, okay. I don't know anything. So this is a very, very high level overview of the beliefs and the practices and like why people call it a cult. Okay. We're gonna have to deep dive like all of these things. <laughs> that okay. We could do this series forever. I bet it. Because, because also so Scientology much. also changes. Like, yeah two it does yeah it's crazy so scientology though was founded by a man named l ron hubbard okay l ron hubbard wrote a book in 1950 called dianetics and dianetics was a technology he called it a technology that he wanted to be a new form of therapy like he felt like he had discovered a revolutionary therapeutic technique. Was he a therapist? What do you think he was? What would make sense? What? Are, give me five options that would make sense as to what somebody okay. who wrote a book trying to help people heal from mental and psychosomatic ailments. So I'm giving you be. like what I really think. Yeah. Not what. Like I'm what sure makes sense. Okay. A therapist. Okay. A doctor. Okay. A like. Um, I would say like like a counselor because that's not like a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Okay, either of those would make sense. Like a like a guru, like a life okay. coach, I guess. Is that top five? I don't know another one. Like okay. I don't know anybody else who would be for me qualified to be like this is the new therapy that you should be doing. Like I would think therapist, doctor. He was clearly neither of those, none of those, not a life coach, none of them. Nothing. Where did he come from? Did he just come out of the blue? He was a science fiction writer. He wrote he wrote a few books before Dianetics. Okay. All of them were science fiction books. How many books? Are they I don't know how many books he wrote before Di are they, Dianetics. Are they all science fiction? They're all science fiction. And yeah. he and he just was like, this one's not. Yes. Okay. Yep. So he never, so he did not claim that this was fiction. He was like, I'm, no. I have. So Dianetics was him stumbling upon a new therapeutic technique that would help people overcome through science fiction writing, through being an author. No. Okay. So there, so we're going to talk about what's in Dianetics. Okay. Okay. Because the Dianetics is very science fiction y, but it wasn't, he did not, he didn't think it was science fiction. So the thing that's boggling my brain is how anybody, to just be like, I write sci-fi. Because I know what sci-fi is. Right? Right. Because I read right. books. And just being like, so I'm going to write about like a new therapy. Right. Like there, because sci-fi is out there. Like it's it's not founded in, it's founded in like some science, but not always. Right. A lot of it's just thought. Yes. So let me read to you Scientology's version of what Scientology is. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm like nervous. I did not know that. Yeah. So Scientology doesn't tell people that L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer. I think I think they will admit to that. It's not like they hide that, but they just talk about him as like the genius founder of Scientology. Is he like who's the Mormon? found like the guy J joseph smith joseph is he like the joseph smith of yeah okay yes so scientology joseph smith also came out of nowhere right and didn't have a founding in anything yes so our next episode is going to be a deep dive into l ron hubbard because his life story is actually crazy even crazier than really? just being a science fiction writer okay the man is absolutely unhinged i'll save more of my questions for next yes week. so we're we'll deep dive on him but l ron hubbard wrote everything that is what Scientology is based off of. 
So Scientology, Scientologists follow strictly L. Ron Hubbard's writings and teachings, some of which came after Dianetics, which all like it goes through this a little bit. So on Scientology's website, it says developed by L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology is a religion that offers a precise path leading to a complete and certain understanding of one's true spiritual nature and one's relationship to self, family, groups, mankind, all life forms, the material universe, and the spiritual universe, and the supreme being. There's so many weird words in that. So many. It's precise. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be like, okay. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And also all beings. All beings. We'll get into that. But they say mankind. We'll get into that. That's crazy. Scientology addresses the spirit, not the body or mind, and believes that man is far more than a product of his environment or genes. Scientology comprises a body of knowledge which extends from certain fundamental truths. Prime among these are man is an immortal spiritual being. Okay. His experience extends well beyond a single lifetime. Okay. So they believe in reincarnation and multiple lives. I say, so they're like that's Buddhist faith. Like there's some like reincarnation mm-hmm. in that faith practice as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it says his capabilities are unlimited, even if not presently realized. So they believe that we are man is capable of so much more than just your average everyday person knows or can access. Okay. But you can access it through Scientology's teachings. Okay. It also says Scientology further holds man to be basically good and that his spiritual salvation depends upon himself, his fellows, and his attainment of brotherhood within the universe. So it's very different from Christianity, whereas like Christianity is like you're fundamentally bad. Okay. Like you're fundamentally a sinner and you need to be saved through Jesus. Baptism. Yeah. Scientology is like, you are your answer. Like, you are basically good, and you are the answer to achieving your full potential. And also the thing keeping you from achieving your full potential. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Kind of. (laughs) Uh, Scientology is not a dogmatic religion. Remember, this is what Scientology says about it. It's not a dogmatic religion in which one is asked to accept anything on faith alone. So is this off their, like, website? Yes. They are not, so they are not asking you to accept anything on faith alone. On the contrary, one discovers for oneself that the principles of Scientology are true by applying its principles and observing or experiencing results. Do you remember, hold on, (laughs) this is like crazy to me. Do you remember the Love Cult? documentary yeah yeah i love his one it's like that though it feels like that some. so there is a lot of it's like if you just apply this practice yeah. you'll get out of your way to like be fully actualized and like yes. everything will be clear and you'll have this life and this love that you everybody should be allowed or everything mm-hmm. but it's there for everybody yes scientology has borrowed a lot of things from a lot of different places well i would assume that the love has won people have borrowed some of these thoughts yeah. from scientology because L. Ron Hubbard wrote the book in the 50s, right? Is yes. What he said? In 1950 is when he wrote Dianetics. So uh, actually <laughs> several cults, especially ones that are very successful, base some of their practices well, on Scientology. Scientology is very successful. Right. So, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Why would you mess with the formula? Right. If the formula works. And Scientology a, yeah. is the proof that the formula right. works. So it also says the ultimate goal of Scientology is true spiritual enlightenment and freedom for all. All people. Yes. Okay. Now let's talk about what Wikipedia says Scientology is. <laughs> I love that this was not the Wikipedia thing. <laughs> that was Scientology. That was the web version. Yes. Okay. So Wikipedia says Scientology is a set of beliefs and practices invented by the American author L. Ron Hubbard as an associated and an associated movement. So. Oh, Scientology didn't even mention L. It's Ron. beliefs, practices, and an associated movement invented by L. Ron Hubbard. Okay. Yeah. So that's what, like... So it's beliefs and action that he decided on. Like, he invented it. Right. Okay. So Scientology is, like, he discovered this, like, through spiritual enlightenment, and he recorded it for all of mankind. He completely made this shit up. He is a science fiction writer. Yeah. He's, (laughs) he's, 
it's like Moses and the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Like kind God, of. God or whatever they believe in. Yes. Just gave this information to him. Yep. So he initially developed a set of ideas that he called Dianetics, which he represented as a form of therapy. He presented it to a lot of like therapeutic institutions and tried to get it going as a therapy movement for a couple of years. That's so crazy. As somebody with a psychology degree. The well, this was, the, that, this was 1950. That's true. So there was a lot of new psychological movements at the time. There were. There were. It wasn't out of the blue for someone to be presenting new theories to psychology. The problem with L. Ron Hubbard's Dianetics was yeah, that. Like, a therapist. Right. <laughs> he wasn't a scientist or a therapist or yeah. anything. And Dianetics wasn't based on any scientific methods. So, like, there was no, he didn't do any studies. He didn't do, there was no. He's just like, this works. Yes. With no proof. Yes. So trust that it works by doing it. Right. So psychological organizations were like, no. It like, actually could cause harm. Yeah. Like yeah. this is not, you can't do this yeah. and completely wrote it off as nonsense. Which makes so, sense. So he developed an organization to promote Dianetics, but that went bankrupt. Oh, by, so that's not Scientology. Well, Dianetics is the basis yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this organization yes. is no longer, is not Scientology. Right. And that is the organization where he was trying to develop it as a therapy okay by 1952 so just two years into it he yeah. lost the rights to dianetics because this all fell apart and went bankrupt as a therapeutic technique like it didn't work and nobody accepted it as a thing so he decided to recharacterize his ideas as a religion and renamed it scientology in 1954 he regained the rights to dianetics and came out with this new religious movement called Scientology, not called Dianetics, called Scientology. And he developed the Church of Scientology in 1954 as well. Yeah. Okay. That's so fast. There's so <laughs> many things that happen in four years. So many things. Okay. Before this, in 1948, L. Ron Hubbard went to like an author's convention, okay. some kind of author's convention. And he was quoted saying, you don't get rich by being a science fiction writer. You get rich by starting a religion. Mm. <laughs> okay. Scientology will not tell you that. Scientology will be like, that's fake. That's false. He, he never said <gasps> they anything They just don't like think that. he even said it. No. No. They're like, that's what? crazy. Yeah. But it's on record somewhere? Yeah. They've, okay. I'm pretty sure they've established that he did, in fact, say that. Like, it's not alleged. Well, you got to have that tax like exemption. That. Right. You need the tax exemption. Yeah. That's what that's what the Love is One cult guy did, too. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, we have to be a religion. Right. For the money. Yes. Because they wanted to be rich. Right. That's so bad. Yeah. You, starting a religion or a cult, starting a cult where you manipulate people into giving you money makes you very rich. And then you just don't want to pay taxes on that money. Yes. So that's what Wikipedia says about it. That's what Scientology says about it. Scientology, what you read me, didn't even mention L. Ron. It did. It did? Yeah. Okay, okay. It said it's all based on his teachings. Wikipedia is like, by the way, L. Ron Hubbard made it up. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy guy. <laughs> yes. I still, up until like a minute ago, <laughs> I still thought it was some sort of dogmatic, like faith-based, protestant based god based some some founding in that because being raised in the church i could understand somebody especially in america where it seems like i know that scientology is worldwide but it feels like america is very affected by scientology on such a like large scale because it's our celebrities that join yeah. it so for me and i can they have understand a cross. they use a cross, they use a cross and, cross, and i can understand and... the jump from this like protestant civilization that we live in this very like faith ish like god and country like in god we trust like it's there i can mm -hmm. understand the jump from that to like a faith-based cult does that make sense yeah the fact that it faith like that it's not even founded not that god's not also founded in right does that makes sense yeah but for me it's harder like i can understand having a faith in something Right. So and leading me to 
So if you look yeah. deeper in, like if you click around on Scientology's website and you look deeper into their beliefs in like the supreme being and that it's not dogmatic, it will say you can believe in anything and do Scientology. Like you can believe you can be Christian and be a Scientologist. You can be Jewish and be a Scientologist. You can believe in just self-help and be a Scientologist. They say that um, like the supreme being aspect of it can be anything. It's just whatever your higher power is. But the further you go into Scientology, they think that's all ridiculous. Like the deeper you get into the belief systems, it's like very complicated. So that's like a hook. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's like the entry thing that they're like, it's about you. You don't have to have faith. It's based on these like proven practices and all of this stuff. And the proof is not there. There's no proof. Okay. Except but Scientologists. Scientologists think that there is. Yes. And they feel that what they do is proof enough. Okay. I need so, to know more about Okay, let's the the, the their book. Bully. Their yes. belief. Okay, so Dianetics, according to Wikipedia. Okay. Which is pretty accurate. Wikipedia I like, who actually runs the Scientology Wikipedia. Book? I don't know, is but it's fair yeah. <laughs> I actually actually I'm the top contributor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's like the Wikipedia page is cool because it's not really like ex Scientologists like telling all the truths oh, of it, okay. but it's not Scientology's like propaganda entry level. Version it's just somebody it. telling. It's fairly accurate. About yes. Yeah, I haven't come across anything where I'm like, wait, that's not that's not right. So, Dianetics theory describes the human mind as two parts: your conscious analytical mind. And your unconscious reactive mind. Okay. Well, that's based in facts. Yes. So your ego, your super ego. Got it. The purpose of Dianetics is to audit or erase the contents of your reactive mind. So L. Ron Hubbard said that in times of pain and unconsciousness, Mm -hmm. things called engrams can attach to your reactive mind. Now, I was one of the millions of people who saw your silent birth video. Yes. I just don't know what any of what you just said means. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, yes. it's all just words. Right. To me. Right. So he thinks all, all, everything that's wrong in your life can be traced back to something that happened to you during times of pain and unconscious that attached to your reactive mind in the form of something called an engram. And that by auditing, which I'll explain auditing in a second, you can get rid of the engrams okay. and better yourself in your life. Okay. And get rid of your ailments. Does that make sense? All ailments. Uh, like physical and mental? He said mental, mental, psychosomatic, okay. and emotional. So not like a broken leg or like. They do have a ailments, belief like in faith healing. They do have a version of that that they call touch assist. Of course they do. Okay. Yes. So like they do think that Scientology can heal physical ailments as well. Okay. That's another discussion for another time and another. I just time. wanted to know what he yes. said. So he thinks like mental, emotional, and psychosomatic ailments are mainly what you're working on. Okay. When you do auditing. Okay. And auditing is something that you do when it's what you do to clear the engrams. You use. Like you're about to say something so crazy right now. I, I am. I'm like trying to <laughs> oh, no. wrap my head around how to even explain this. Later on, he developed something called an e meter. So initially, you Isn't didn't. Is that an engram meter? Is that what they're metering? Probably. Okay. I think so. Okay. E meters. Have you ever seen an e-meter? No, I don't I'm know. I'm gonna show it to you and I'll pop it up in the screen for okay. everybody else. E-meter. Scientology. This is an e-meter. There's been various versions of them okay. like throughout history. It has dials, a needle yeah. that floats back and forth, and cans. Okay. The person being audited holds the cans. Mm-hmm. And the auditor, the e-meter faces the auditor, the person asking questions. So not the person. No. Okay, being audited. Right. The person holding the cans can't see what the e-meter is doing. They just hold the cans. The person on the other side, the auditor, can see what it's doing. It is not like therapy where they ask you questions and then walk you th- through things and um, give you suggestions or ask you to come to certain conclusions. They are not supposed to like interact, interfere at all 
with the conclusions like you're coming to as the person being audited. Oh, okay. They just ask you questions and they want the needle to tell them if you've uncovered something or not. The questions that they ask you during auditing are, they, is there like are a set unhinged. I think there are sets of questions based on what level of Scientology you're on. So we'll get to that. That means that there's no control. There's no control. Oh, my gosh. And because they believe in reincarnation and past lives, they could be asking you questions about past lives as well. Yeah. So, like, they could be asking you questions waiting but for... Even people who believe in past lives know that you don't, you can't, like, always access that. In Scientology, you can. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You just can't. You just can't. Okay, okay. You just will. Because the needle will tell you. Okay. Like, once you've unlocked the thing. But what does, what does the needle even... I thought my order And when your needle... Okay, okay. okay. The same, like, what are they doing? They're just asking you questions. You're doing it. You're doing it. Okay. So they also believe that your soul, like your spirit being is a, called a Thetan. I've never heard a more science fiction word than that. Yeah. The Thetan is an immortal spiritual being and is considered the human soul. It's the being who lives inside your body. Mm -hmm. It animates your mind and body. Okay. But the like spiritual soul thing is a Thetan. So like your body, your Thetan. Is mm -hmm. what gets the engrams, okay. and you want to clear the engrams from your Thetan. Your Thetan existed in all your past lives, so if <laughs> it's the same Thetan through all the lives, so if you're not, if your needle's not floating because something didn't happen in this life, okay. Here's where this gets really problematic. Say they're asking you a question like, "Have you ever harmed somebody?" Okay, and you're like. No, I haven't harmed anyone. Or it can be, sometimes the questions can be really specific too. Yeah. Like, have you ever, they get really dark. So that's always where my mind goes is to like the really bad ones. But like, have you ever hit your spouse? Okay. And you could sit there on the hands and say, no, I've never hit your spouse. But if it moves. But your needle's not floating. If your needle doesn't float and say, yes, that's the thing that we need to clear or whatever, then they're like, okay, think of an earlier similar time. And if you're like, okay, maybe when I was five, I hit my sister and your needle doesn't float. They're like, think of an earlier similar thing. Now you have to start talking about your past lives. But if you don't, like, but you don't know your past lives. So people usually either make it up okay. and are fully conscious that they are fully I making said, it up. That sounds like you would have to make it up. Or some Scientologists believe that they remember past lives, just like some Christians believe that they're being possessed by a demon and the demon's been cast out of you. So, like, I think some Scientologists. That's not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> I could have said it. We could have said anything. Yeah. So, I think some Scientologists believe that they're remembering past lives. Okay. Some of them very consciously know no, they are not. Making yes. So, they'll make something up entirely and be like, Yes, in my most recent life, I was, like, if I'm a woman now, I could be like, I was a man, and my spouse was a woman, and I beat the crap out of her regularly. If your needle floats, they're like, boom. There it is. That's it. Now we know. Yeah. Let's fix that. Right. So imagine, like, the shame and guilt and, like, all the stuff that someone could then put on themselves because Scientology and the E meter are like, yeah, you were a are there real shitty person. Are there people like watching the E meter to confirm? No. So just one person? Just one auditor. And Scientology records all auditing sessions. Do they record the E meter so that somebody could confirm or deny whether that needle was actually? I don't know that they video or audio record it. Or if they just write down oh. what you say or what happens during the session because it goes in your pre-clear folder. Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yes. I'm just, I'm boggled by the idea that someone could just sit here and be like, nope, not it. Try again. Keep mm -hmm. going. And not have anybody else to confirm that that is or is not what is happening with this e-meter. Yeah. Like that just boggles my mind. Yeah. Also. Yeah. So. 
seems like a system where a lot of control and abuse could happen pretty mm-hmm. easily without any oversight or wild who would have thought <laughs> that really is crazy. that is genuinely such a problem for me mm-hmm. that one person is the only person who sees that needle yeah and i know that we've just said that all this other crazy stuff <laughs> but that i'm really hung up on that yeah because that if that is the basis of their belief that we're going to clear these things and we're going to like through this clearing, you're going to access all of this, all the good stuff that's waiting for you, not only in this life, but in all your other lives. Mm-hmm. The fact that one person is the blockade or the con- confirmation or the auditor or whatever. Yeah. And I think you generally have the same auditor for like a length of time. Really? But it's like you therapy. can have different ones. Yeah. Like, but you it's therapy based. Yeah. Okay. But I think depending on like the levels that you're on. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. That feels really gross. Yeah. So now that you know, like it believe they believe in reactive mind, Thetans, and Grams, the whole idea is to And the past lives. Which audit, I didn't know. Right. The whole idea is to audit the engrams off of you. So the way Scientology gets people in though mm. is they have a number of books that you can ru- read. And just like buy off the shelf and some basic introductory courses that do not mention any of this. They do not talk about the basis Satan's. of yes, but they don't even mention it. Mm, I don't know if some of the intro courses might, but some of the intro courses are like how to communicate better, how to have good finances, how to like really basic, basic stuff. So you can actually go on to Scientology right now. And you can click around so and do they find have like a YouTube channel that I can just like watch these things. They have a YouTube channel, but they don't. You have to pay. Mm. Okay, they're not telling you anything for free. Nothing. Nothing. So there's usually some like the first dose is free, right? Like the first thing is free. Like so, the way they used to do it before the internet, and this is where a lot of the Scientology protests come in. Before the internet, Scientology had testing centers. They yeah. still have testing centers. <clears throat> Yeah. And they would go on the street. They like them. They would usually put them in big cities where the most attractive, like Sea Org members, we'll get to the Sea Org in a minute, would go out on the mm-hmm. street and meet people, chat them up, and get them to come inside and take a free personality test. Okay. So that's the free. That's thing. free. Yes. That's the let's get people in the door. Yeah. What's their tactic? Is it still just that? Mostly they do a lot of that. Now you can go on and there are beginning books. You can buy Dianetics. Like, you don't have to pay for Scientology courses to buy Dianetics and read, like, that first book. Have so you? So you can do beginning books. No, I have not. And I actually highly recommend that nobody that you do don't. this. Yeah. Because if you go on Scientology's website right now and you try to buy something and put your information in, they will never, ever, ever leave you alone really? ever again. I'm dead serious. Can you buy that, like, Barnes & Noble? I don't think so. I think you might be able to buy it on like Amazon. Um, even then, I'm sure they will get your information. Oh, yeah. And sure. they will keep it forever. They will follow you everywhere. They will find you. And they will continuously send you information, postcards. Uh, my friend Liz Gale did a video where she made like a collage of all her Scientology mail that they've sent her over the years. And it was like hundreds thousands of like pieces of paper and postcards like Excuse extremely me, we're trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty That's exactly <laughs> scientology is ruthless they wow. do not care somebody else went viral because she signed her ex-boyfriend up for a scientology like book okay <laughs> so that scientology would never leave him alone that's kind of funny I it mean, was really funny. It's also and also I highly recommend really that no one does. But also don't do that. Yeah. So the other thing that I find interesting is that they have beginning books, which obviously you have to buy, audio book books, introductory lectures and introductory films and beginning services. Okay. I have a hard time believing you can get any of these for free. But when you read about them, it doesn't say that you have to buy them. It okay. just asks for like your name and information and address Mm -hmm. and phone number and email Mm -hmm. but i really doubt that any of these are free 
The only thing that I know of that is free in Scientology is the personality test. Okay. And these personality tests are not based in science or therapy or anything. Oh, so they're not like the ENFJ no. or... They're rigged to tell you something's wrong with you every time. It's yeah. just the different thing that's wrong with you so that they can pitch Scientology to yeah. you. Yeah. And they will try to get you to buy Dianetics. They will try to get you to sign up for introductory courses like after taking the free test. So that's why I'm like on here, like you can buy all of these courses like communication leadership like whatever i thought i saw and to do these you don't have to commit to scientology technically you don't have to commit to scientology but they will not ever leave you alone ever again (laughs) the idea that it's like do you want to be a better leader let the church of scientology tell you how to do it yeah no commitment right so the here you can do this success through communication course and it you can enroll. There's no like buy now. There's, no, there's no buy no now. There's no price. But I will not yeah, don't put in don't any of this to go past there. it to see if they're like, okay, now give us a hundred dollars or whatever. Yeah, I do want to Because know they're not they're not free. Like they are not free. Can you call? I would not do that. On like a burner phone. Maybe we could try to get a burner phone and call Scientology. I would. <laughs> I need to understand how much. I need somebody to tell me a number for like this, this one course. Yeah. Because I know the one thing I do, I feel like I fully understand about Scientology is that it will bleed you dry financially. This is where it will bleed you dry. So now I'm going to show you what they are. The introductory courses and books are meant to get you into Scientology and on the path to going up the bridge to total freedom. Have you heard about the bridge? No. (gasps) I'm showing you the I, bridge. I nothing. <gasps> I like need this to be there. That I am a firm, committed friend. So I watch every <laughs> video that comes all across everything. And because when we started talking about this, like a while ago, I started muting my phone when I knew you were talking about Scientology. So I would like not know. Like yeah. I don't. I don't know what I don't know. Like I don't know anything. Okay. So I thought everybody knew what the bridge was. No, I have no idea. Let me see if I can get a good picture. This is Scientology's like. The bridge of total. Yeah. Okay. So it has two sides. You can see there are like two sides to it. This side is the processing. And this side is the training. Okay. Scientology ultimately wants you to get, wants to get you on the purification rundown. So you can start going up, up the bridge to clear. Okay. They really want you to get to clear. And that's when the auditing and stuff starts? That's when they've cleared. No, the auditing starts from the beginning. Oh. From the beginning of the bridge. Okay. And then once you're clear, that means they've cleared your engrams. Remember the auditing? Yes. Is to clear the engrams to make you a better person, better at communicating, better at whatever. After clear. (laughs) It feels like there's, that should be it. It's like, great. You succeeded at therapy. But it's not therapy anymore. Right. So after clear, you have your operating thetan levels. Hmm. So you've cleared the engrams. Your thetan is almost operating at full capacity. But now you have this untapped potential that (laughs) most men don't access that Scientology can teach you how to access. So you have to go through. The fact that this is called the sunshine rundown is funny. Ridiculous. Yeah. Then you have to. But. You can't just go to the operating thetan levels, right? You have to do the sunshine right now. You have, you have to, to do OT preparations, OT eligibility. You have to pay for all of these. So you have to pay for the purification rundown. You have to pay for this. You have to pay for the happiness rundown. Pray, pay for grade zero. Pay for grade one. Pay for grade two. You pay for all of these usually in advance. <gasps> like you don't get auditing and then pay for your auditing. You buy these either in packages or you can buy it like course by course or like section by section, but you pay for it in advance and then you do it. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to do it. People get stuck on some of these for like years at a time, years at a time. Wait, wait, wait. You do your processing. You want to get to clear. You want to do your operating thetan levels, but at the same time, you can do your trainings to be an auditor. You have to pay for your trainings mm-hmm. to be an auditor too. Do you and get as- for free if you're an auditor? No, of course not. God, okay. <laughs> That's so silly of you to ask. Why would that be the case? You have to pay for everything. That's making me nuts. The only, we'll get to where, 
we'll get to the part where you can get Scientology for free. There is an option. There is an option. There is an option. We'll get there. We'll talk okay. about it later. We'll circle back around to it. So as you go up the bridge, you pay for the processing. You can also pay to be taught how to audit, like mm -hmm. as you go up. You can't be taught to audit OT levels if you're not clear. That's nuts. So you have to do, you, you like have to do both. Now, oh. to my understanding, not everybody does the training and the processing. Like hand in hand. Right. Okay. Because not everybody has to be an auditor. Like, oh. you don't have to do that. But it's recommended. I would say, if that feels nice, like, you can still succeed in Scientology without doing this stuff. Right. At least it's not, there's no success for anybody if not everybody does all of these things. Right. To be fair, I'm sure that there is no success in Scientology. Disclaimer. Yeah. That doesn't really <laughs> exist. Yes. But, like, oftentimes you do see... In other problematic groups that we've talked about or that I've been more interested in, it is very much like you cannot succeed. Like if there's two pathways, you have to be fully succeeding at both, both of them. Right. Well, there is like a level of pressure. I'm sure. And like shame or whatever. Cults want you to always be striving to your highest potential while ultimately making your highest potential out of reach yeah because if you ever reach it you then have that you like moving leave. gold go right. post, which is why it's like clear okay clear right you so think, wait like we're good this is the best part relevant. of the bridge oh, no. the current bridge goes up to ot8 okay that's what l ron hubbard wrote so everything's based on his writings all of these statuses and courses dynamic. everything well, he wrote a bunch of stuff after oh, Dianetics as well. Okay. Yeah, like he wrote all of these individually. He wrote everything that is on every one of these levels. Wow. It's all based entirely on L. Ron Hubbard's writings oh, and lectures. Yeah. Like, so he, but. Religion of cult. He only finished writing OT8 before he died. I say he died. But he didn't die. In Scientology, he discarded. Okay. And he discarded his body to move on to research yeah, for the rest I, of the OT. Levels. I just forgot. Like I, I had forgotten. Yeah. About the past life thing until again just now. <laughs> so you'll notice that OT eight, there's also OT nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And they all say new. They all say new. Confidential until released, not yet released. So there's also this promise in Scientology that at some point L. Ron Hubbard it's is going back. To come back because he's and it's going to be him mm -hmm. and he's researching all these other ot levels what's so interesting is it could have been anything so they could have said like um the children of god when he died it was like the prophet gay like that that energy that mm -hmm. being that importance transferred to this new person right so it is interesting that they just think it's going to be him Yes, because they have to keep people striving for something and they only have OT8 and lots of Scient Scientology has been around for long enough now that Do they the, have most, people up there? the most dedicated members have reached OT8. Wow. But you have to keep something dangled. Something. You have to dangle some kind of carrot to keep people in the cult. I didn't even think you about that. You can't achieve the perfect form of what cults promise you because then you don't need the cult anymore. So they have to dangle these carrots all the way up to OT15 that supposedly L. Ron Hubbard is researching right now coming. and they will release when L. Ron Hubbard reveals. But there's no like... He is dead. I was like, he's dead. There, that's not happening. He has died. <laughs> so to illnesses. me, I'm like, if I'm the leader of this mm -hmm. cult or the, the marketing or the PR person for this, I'm going, guys, yes. we can all agree that that... Like, it's not him. He's coming. We know he's coming. It's fine. But in the meantime, we have to like something. I Is somebody know. not up there doing this? I don't think so. And a lot of the people who have left said that they're not really doing that. Some people are concerned. So David Miscavige is the current leader of Scientology. After we deep dive L. Ron Hubbard, we're going to deep dive David Miscavige. Okay. Because that's a crazy story and I can't even get into it. That's fine. But See, for me, I'm like, he writes it now. People think that, no, because he's not L. Ron not Hubbard. Hubbard. He can't. People think that David Miscavige is like a true believer and like believes L. Ron Hubbard is going to come back with the OT levels. And that's why he's wow. not like writing them. Some people think there's no way 
he actually believes that like he knows it's all bullshit and they but they don't really know why so he's not writing somebody levels. up on the level on these higher levels has got to understand but i think they, they don't have a belief that says l ron hubbard could write these through someone else and i think that's the biggest problem there's no scientology writing or belief system that mm. says like l ron hubbard it from, is just him yes he has to reincarnate uh, and say it's him and like know all these things what a loophole. to write right what a loophole well, guess what david miscavige... he really missed the boat on something. he really did well what david miscavige did and said you see all these say like new yeah new ot5 new ot6 new ot7 he said oh guys we found revised versions of these that l ron hubbard wrote you have to take the new ot courses so people who had gotten all so the way up to ot8 back? before had to go back to any of the ones that he found and pay for them again <gasps> to do the new I didn't OT think courses. That they would make them pay for them. Again. Of course, they needed the money. They need the people to keep taking the courses. I'm having a really hard time with any. But how does anybody elite like? So this is my thing. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we talk about there is something that breaks the shelf. Right. Yeah. You've talked to me about that metaphor before where it's like you put these problematic things on the shelf until eventually the shelf can't hold them all. Mm -hmm. Are people not just like the money is the shelf for me? Like ever? Some people are. Some people aren't. That's not. So that's another really. How is it? How are people not just being like, guys, this is an MLM? Because they think MLMs are different than Scientology because they have the answers. And Scientology is right and MLMs are not. But they're like not that different. It right. seems in in structure. It's not in Scientology. Actually, that's why Scientology <clears throat> was one of the big things that woke me up to like what I was part of. Oh, yeah. Because I was paying tens of thousands of dollars for someone to talk to me yeah. once a week, and I was like, "Oh!" And you're like, "Therapy oh, only no. cost me like five dollars a session. Yeah, twenty five dollars a session, maybe a hundred dollars, but and, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, seems exorbitant." And like some of these levels on Scientology aren't tens of thousands of dollars. So I was like paying more <gasps> for like six yeah. months of coaching than some of these Scientology courses. How much is the, the Love is One cult? It's got to be know. similar. I don't know. Because Not, they have like a whole compound now. I was in a very special section of business coaching where high ticket was like the thing. And it was the thing to see how much you could charge people for something. So, like, I was a very special. I feel like I can't charge anybody for anything. <laughs> I know. I will make, like, like normal people feel like that. Like, I will <laughs> make big things for people and be like, yeah. how much can I pay for this? I'm like, pennies. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Actually, In why fact, would you <laughs> even suggest <laughs> that this is worth money? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. So, the idea that it's like, I'm going to just throw a number out there right it feels like dr evil mm -hmm. in the like i want one that's what it felt dollars. like yeah that's really what it felt like so yeah scientology that's they want you to clear they want you to go up the bridge do and then go levels. back and do it again yeah and until they'll figure Hubbard out Hubbard yeah hope, back. hopefully they'll figure out something so do they think he levels. will reincarnate or that his consciousness is currently just in like the ether waiting for a new vessel uh i don't know I have no idea, like, exactly what that looks like. I do know that they've built houses for him. L. Ron Hubbard has a few houses that are ready and waiting for him to come back. They're maintained by staff. And they lay out his clothes every day. And for a long time, they um, would, like, cut symbols, like, in the lawn. Like, these Scientology so symbols. So that when he just so that dropped he, out of the heavens, he yeah, would know where he to would land. be like, oh, that's my house. And he would know, like, what house to go to. So there's another level of these beliefs. Okay. Are you ready? On the OT I level. I don't know if I am. <laughs> what you just said was one of the crazier things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> On the OT levels, you learn about Xenu and the aliens. Okay. Have you heard the Xenu story? No. Have you? I know that they. I know they believe in aliens. Yeah. So what I remember when, okay, my mom was like a Tom Cruise fan mm -hmm. before Scientology mm -hmm. or when he, I guess when, when he first became famous, he wasn't a Scientologist, right? Right. I don't fully understand the 
how I don't understand his timeline in Scientology much. Yeah. Because I was a kid. Right. Like I was a child. But right. my mom had a huge crush on Tom Cruise mm -hmm. as like as like her like 80s heartthrob person. Yeah. And she also loved Madonna because yeah. she was a kid in the eight she was a teen young adult in the 80s, right? Yeah. So she loved these two people and then they both they're both Scientologists, right? Mm -hmm. Madonna is still? Uh, no, I don't think Madonna ever was. I thought she was. She might have taken she courses or be involved. She did like Kabbalah. I'm Maybe like a, that's in it. The she did a lot of work. She's odd. She's just an odd person. <laughs> it's okay. We but my thing is, because of that, what I have garnered from like my mom's just I was a kid, so I'm just like overhearing things or in the in the wings of like adult conversations. It's like the celebrity alien cult. Mm -hmm. It's just like what I know about Scientology. So I knew yeah. that they believed in aliens. Yeah. So the South Park episode. I, I don't watch that. I've never seen an episode of South Park either. I've only seen the Scientology episode because no. I had to finally watch it. <laughs> After learning all about Scientology. And You're it's like, pretty actually, accurate. I need to see this. Yeah. They actually tell the whole Xenu story um, in South Park. So Xenu is the ruler of a galactic confederacy okay who brought billions of his people to earth sounds like sci-fi yes this was one of his sci-fi books before he made dianetics and scientology really quickly did you know c.s lewis also wrote sci-fi yeah that's crazy like seven or eight sci-fi novels from c.s lewis one of my friends collects them and they've like deconstructed and they used to uh -huh. be like a youth pastor and they looked up to C.S. Lewis as like this Christian thing. Yeah, C.S. So Lewis. Oh my God, the Protestants love C.S. Lewis. To be fair, yeah, <laughs> right. Like you can't give us like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, right? Right, and not be like, like that's a good book. That's a good. It gets real weird later, but like the first early books are cool, right? Yeah. I get that. He also like deep like sci-fi, and one of my friends who's deconstructed like hunt the old covers and stuff of c.s lewis book that's really cool and he has like a couple of them that he's like shown on his tiktok and stuff and i think that the, i i like his comment like i did not even know that he wrote sci-fi and he's like <laughs> yeah like a lot of sci-fi that's, that's where he has a lot of his authoring like roots yeah that's crazy interesting right yeah so if i were to tell you the xenu story i don't know why it like doesn't stick in my brain i can't remember it all i know is that xenu is like an alien leader of the Galactic Federation okay. and that he brought a bunch of Thetans to Earth and they got like put in a volcano or something and like the volcano erupted and Thetans got all over the Earth and like that's like what inhabits people's bodies. So let's read what Wikipedia So not says. everybody has a Thetan? No, no, no. We all have Thetans. Oh, okay. But there are extra ones. Like there are, okay, so listen. Okay. Wikipedia says <laughs> Xenu was the extraterrestrial ruler of the Galactic Confederacy, which is also like there are people who believe in aliens, yeah, like, channeling aliens. I used to follow one of those girls for a really long time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that seems that I, tracks. <laughs> I was a part of a lot of different cults, okay, and they all talk Cassie's about the, like I'm cultable. That's why I have to. I, I have to know. Yes, all the information. Uh, about they all cult. talk about the Galactic Federation. Like anyone all who, of them? yes. So it's not just Scientology. No, like everybody who talks about aliens that I've ever heard talk about aliens, which could be a very small pool of people. Okay, it's not like I've heard everyone. <laughs> I will like admit it. that maybe my <laughs> my control group, yeah, <laughs> is limited. It's like, but small, I've heard small um, something fallacy. Like when it's you yeah. only have a few test subjects, <laughs> yeah, and they all give you the same results. It's like, yeah, ten people have all succeeded with this. It's like a small market fallacy. Or if whatever. I was still really cultable and didn't know any better, I would be like, yeah, the Galactic Federation has to be real because all these different all people. All 11 people I've ever talked to. <laughs> talk about <laughs> it. Yes. Uh, so anyway, he brought billions of his people to Earth, which was then billions. known as t -Giac. Oh, God. Okay. What was the name of Earth? In DC-8-like <sighs> spacecraft 75 million years ago stacked them around volcanoes and killed them with hydrogen bombs why official scientology scriptures hold that the thetans of these aliens adhere to humans causing spiritual harm 
So once you get to the OT levels, it's not just the engrams. It's also these galactic You beings. also have, yes, the thetans of aliens oh, okay. also that are also on you causing harm. So you've paid all this money, done all this work because Dianetics was like, you just have a reactive mind and the engrams attached to your reactive mind. And if you just audit off the engrams, you're clear. But then Wait, we get... forgot to tell you about the aliens. <laughs> they're like, oh, by the way. <laughs> Actually, we also have to fight off the Thetans of aliens. Yes. From 75 million years ago yes. that are just here. So this is my thing. If we're clearing engrams to free our Thetans, does clearing the engrams uh, like of these other, does it not like cure these other Thetans? I think that's kind of the OT levels. So I think you clear is, the other like, Thetans. It's like, but there's so many of them. Everybody has one. So yeah. there's billions, that's right. what they said, that he brought billions. Yes. So this all is in the OT levels that people pay thousands, tens, or hundreds of thousands of dollars for, but you can read about it on Wikipedia. That's why. And actually, the that's full actually OT really levels crazy. are posted on the internet for free. Am I going to leave this conversation, like, really depressed, actually? Maybe. <laughs> I'm, like, feeling a lot of, like, wow. Scientology is really bad. So these events are known within Scientology as Incident 2, and the traumatic memories associated with them as the Wall of Fire or R6 implant. The narrative of Xenu is part of Scientology's teachings about extraterrestrial civilizations and alien interventions in earthly events, collectively described as space opera by L. Ron Hubbard. Hubbard detailed the story in OT3 in 1967, warning that the R6 implant, past trauma, was calculated to kill anyone who attempts to solve it. Oh, okay. So... They also believe that if you try to learn about this before you're clear, you will get cancer and die. <laughs> but that's easily provable or not provable. Yes, but if you're afraid that you might be the cause of someone getting a terminal illness, of anyone. if you speak to them about what you're learning about oh in Scientology. Would you risk it? Yeah. If, <laughs> if your whole belief system up until that point was telling you that this Probably. person... Probably. Courtney is we not multiple. Right? <laughs> like, to me. Who is sacrificed to death? It's not... It's, it's literally... Cassie, mm -hmm. and like this galactic space opera is going to give your kids cancer if you tell them about this. Yeah. That's the actual level of cognitive like disconnect that would have to exist inside. Like there's millions of people inside Scientology or is there not? How many people? That's a we'll great get question. There. We'll actually. Get there. That's, a, that's my closing statement. Okay. One of my things with Scientology is it could be 10 people or it could be a hundred million people like I yeah. have no idea how many people are like currently practicing Scientology I've always assumed it was kind of big because we do hear about it a lot but also I understand that because they market towards our celebrities that I could understand hearing about it more because of just the way we talk about celebrities and celebrity yeah. culture that... well you stole the punchline so we might as well talk about it now. no 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 it's okay that was my finishing line <laughs> but okay let's just address <laughs> it now. but my thing is in my brain I just assume that there's a lot of people for some reason. Right. But how many people can actually believe that there's a galactic space opera giving our kids cancer if we tell them about it? So I think that a lot of them, once you get to this point, some of them believe it and a lot of them don't. So on Scientology in the Aftermath, on Leah's show with her series, I remember a really funny scene with her and her mom. Because was her she mom paid, a Yes. Leah was second generation. I was going to say, I thought that she was but she generational. Got, but her mom got in through her stepdad. So Leah wasn't like born, born oh. into it. She was a little bit older. I think she was like middle school age when her mom joined. Could you imagine? Or like eight or nine or 10 or something. Could you imagine my middle schooler being like, yeah, let's join Scientology. Yeah. Could, be, you, could you imagine? That wouldn't. The fly. way that they would react to me being like, <laughs> Actually, guys, real We're quick. We're moving and doing all of this. Let me give you a new download on our life. We believe in aliens <laughs> in a very so real you wouldn't, way. So you wouldn't tell them that. You wouldn't oh, tell yeah, them because that. they get cancer. Yeah. And die. You can't. 
So there's a really funny scene where Leah explains how her mom went through the levels first because Leah paid for her mom to go up the bridge first because her mom had been in it longer and had been doing it and got up the bridge. Then Leah got there and her mom insisted on like sitting in with Leah because Leah Remini doesn't really hide her emotion very well. Like me. Okay, got it. (laughs) So her mom, Sometimes like, I have to remind my facial expressions to use their like inside voice right. when people say things. Yeah. So her mom had to sit in with her and, and they like, explained her. Yeah. They explained Stop. the Xenu story and her mom was like, isn't that amazing, sweetie? Like, isn't crazy, right? And was like, <laughs> like really trying to convey to her. Leah Remini is an actress and keep going. She can't act. Imagine you like spend all that time and money and no. they're like aliens. No, no, no. To be fair, if somebody looked me dead ass in my face and said, by the way, all of that work you just did, fuck all. It's the aliens. We've been we've been hiding the we've been burying this huge punchline mm-hmm. to the tune of thousands and thousands and hundreds thousands of thousands. hundreds of thousands, whatever. They would do that and I would I would thor a table so here's another i would i'm not kidding remember how i was telling you they like record I've... auditing sessions in your pre-clear folder oh god yeah uh-huh i had kind of forgotten about the auditing so because think about, of the aliens <laughs> think about all the things you could have made up from past lives to get your needle to float okay that you've done or said or been or or whatever oh and it's all recorded it's written down mm-hmm. and that if you try to leave they it's might incriminating yeah wow so there's that also, you've been indoctrinated for a long time and spent a lot of money. A lot of cults is like the the lost, what is it called? The sunk cost yeah. fallacy or whatever. Yeah. So like once you've put, even if you don't like, it's one of the things you shelf. Okay. So for to a be lot fair, of people, that's, the that's aliens is one of the things you shelf. That's maybe my one cultable like quality mm-hmm. is if I pay something for, like if I pay what I would assume is an embarrassing amount of money to like receive information, which could be like $5. Like, honestly, like if I was like, you know, actually let me join this MLM. <laughs> it's only $50. What's What's the worst that could happen? Right. And then you would see me deleting every tie to this <laughs> MLM so fast. You would say, I would get embarrassed. Yeah. I think that that's the thing. And you have to remember the human element of so many things. So, like, embarrassment is a really strong emotion. Mm-hmm. And, like, um, feeling that and feeling like corrected is a really strong emotion. Yeah. So, if you get to Xenu and they're like, by the way, it's aliens, the, the, the embarrassment might mm-hmm. be enough to just be like, I have to believe this. Mm-hmm. I have to believe this. Yeah. Because I'm, I would be embarrassed if I got here yeah. to find out this, this punchline that they've been yeah. burying and give up on it now yeah so scientology is so coercive and like I so good that. at this well it has ther- so many also, layers if it is therapy based yeah you have to have a little bit of an understanding of the way the human mind works yeah. enough to create just like a perfect storm right so people in a scientology usually are pushed to their absolute last straw before they leave like they are pushed <laughs> they are pushed to their absolute like end 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 breaking point before they leave and a lot of times it's like harm that they see done to others yeah not even to themselves because there's so much money so much time so much invested into it this is really gonna send you let me tell you this last part okay pretty sure the the last one okay I'm pretty sure once you get all the way to OT8, the big reveal is you made it all up. (laughs) Like everything. I made it up? Yeah. Like, well, because it's all about you. It's not about Xenu or God or like any of these things. So like, I'm pretty sure kind of like the final thing. (laughs) And like. That literally just brought tears to my eyes. That just like brought tears to my eyes. That's awful. Yeah. That's really awful. And then somehow there's supposed to be more. There's supposed to be like another level. It's like you made all of this up. 
But once you do OT 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So do they believe that like more. I am me, but I'm also everyone? Because no. they're giving me this information. No. That, that's weird. I don't understand how they could get there. From yeah. Xenu to like, by the way, actually, <laughs> you're the author of all of this fakeness. Yeah. That's not. That's really sad. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot. So like there are a lot of OT8 Scientologists that are like still Scientologists. A lot of people, once they get to OTA, um, like that's the when table. they leave. Yeah. They're like, never mind. Yeah. Actually, no. Yeah. Wow. How, okay, how much money are we talking from? Okay, let's Google what Entrance Google course through to like the end, OT8. No, do you have to do the training? If you're doing the training, you have to do the other bridge. The processing, yes. Oh. <gasps> But you don't have to do training, but everyone has to process. A rough estimate suggests you'll be paying $128,000 to reach clear. That's like the halfway. Another $33,000 to reach OT3. OT3 is when you learn about Xenu. And an additional $100,000 to $130,000 to reach OT8 after that, which is the so highest you're, level. You're in for half a million dollars for just one person. People mortgage their houses. Like, people take out, like, home equity loans and, like, double pay on their houses to, like, pay for Scientology. Because, like, if you and I were going, like, if me and my partner were going through Scientology, it would be a million dollars for us to reach this. Yeah. So, okay, so if you do auditing, In this it economy. is cheaper. <laughs> right? Sorry. So cheaper alternative through co-auditing. my brain. An alternative is to train with a study partner to become an auditor and participate in co-auditing. So you audit each other until both of you reach clear. This is much more time intensive, taking many years to complete, but the price tag is much lower at about $50,000 to reach clear. Oh, I mean 50. Yeah. Chump change. Really? Right. Let me just write a check. And so like comparing that to like the high ticket business coaching world is like some coaches will charge $100,000 to work with them for like a year, for like a 12 month span. That's usually like the highest level of coaching that you can get with like the the top top earners and like whatever but some people pay that like year after year they pay to coach with people like that yeah see i'm not even joking you i paid ten thousand dollars for five months of coaching that i didn't finish i love you so much and i love your transparency <laughs> and i do think that your transparency will keep a lot of other people from doing stuff like that but you couldn't waterboard that information out of me <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I love you. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Like you cannot give me to admit that anywhere. Yeah. People are like, you are like, I mean, you've never paid money for that, right? I'm like, absolutely not. No. I have not done that. I've never given it. Never. Money. And they'd be like, Courtney, I mean, we've seen your bank statement. No, you haven't. No. It's not real. <laughs> You're on like a like a podcast, like it's it's recorded, like this thing. Mm -hmm. And like that's not me. That's a deep fake. <laughs> Don't know who that is. I've not me. never seen the person in that video before. Yeah. Like that would that. So I understand the embarrassment, like of mm -hmm. getting to OT eight, to getting to OT three, mm -hmm. to getting to that, and being like, I'm so deep in this. Yeah. To especially to the finances. It's rough. That would be hard. That mm -hmm. that would be the thing mm -hmm. that would keep me in. Scientology is like I literally can't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not admit to be. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So I get. I didn't realize that I if paid audit... five hundred thousand dollars to get here. Yeah. To be told I've made it all up. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of. Okay. I guess I made all this up. So a lot of people like Tom Cruise, like celebrities that have a lot of money, like have paid all of that to go all the way up the bridge, and they donate <clears> extra <throat> money to Scientology for like other people. No. Oh. <laughs> no. I thought it was like, oh, well, now that I'm at the top, no. I'll help bring the rest of my no, congregation. They're, they're not worried about those people. Those people have to find the money themselves. But That's like, insane. But hold on. On Scientology's website, they're like, every, we're here for the good of everybody and how we're going to interact with mankind. Remember when I gonna... told you there's a Scientology version and then there's the in practice version? Yeah. Nobody's paying for anyone else's journey of the bridge. Except for like family members, like celebrities like did pay for their fam family members to go up the bridge. 
But a stranger on the street? No. They're going to mm-hmm. donate that money to Scientology and get a tax write-off to the tune of millions and millions of dollars. Oh, okay. So a lot of very wealthy people. like it's a church. Yeah. Like, so it's tax exempt. Yeah. So Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson. <gasps> She's a Scientologist? Oh, yeah. She's an OT8 Scientologist. She's, Still? Yeah. She's also donated um, $21 million to Scientology above and beyond her. Half a million. Bridge. Yeah. I got her there. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So let's really quickly talk about how the last two people. things I wanted to get through and then we'll talk about how Okay. Many so there are two very different experiences of Scientology. There's the Scientology parishioners, mm-hmm. which are the ones that pay the money and do all the things that we've talked about. And then there's the C organization. Okay. Really quickly, I need you to understand that I truly thought the C org okay. meant like something with the C. Well, it's like a fake Navy. It's based off the Navy. Are they like on boats and stuff? No. <laughs> I, I thought that it was boats. Well, you they have a boat. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientology totally... has a boat and Scientology does operate that boat. And in fact, <laughs> when we deep dive into L. Ron Hubbard, he was on that boat a lot. I need you to understand that I truly thought it was like C. Well, why wouldn't you? It's called the C or Reorg- like uh, like <laughs> conservation and research and oh like like about the ocean yeah no it's just about scientology what money are they gonna get from doing research about the sea so i (laughs) i need i'm telling you these things so that everybody understands i know nothing about this i know nothing yeah like you're like the sea org and i'm like oh for the sea okay so the sea org is scientology's clergy this is okay. your priests and practitioners. Do they do anything religious? No, that's not. Do they use the word clergy? No. Okay. Absolutely not. What do they, that's they just just call a, it the Sea Org? That's just a regular, yeah, yeah. But to join the Sea Org, um, okay. you have to sign a contract. You have to dedicate your life and all your lifetimes after to serving in the Sea Org for Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard and in the name of clearing the planet. The contract you sign when joining the Sea Org is for one billion years. And you are a billion years. That's not legally binding. It is not. I don't think that's fake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure any court would look at that and be like, "Mm, you can't commit to a billion years. Yeah, I would (laughs) think if if a judge, if I was like, I need out, and they're trying to like tell me I can't get out, and the judge was like, I don't know, man, it looks like you signed away your next life too. I'd be like, get the fuck (laughs) out. Are you a Scientologist, actually? Are you are you also in this contract? <laughs> right? That's what I would assume. But they don't, people don't know that. Like, not everybody knows. Like, that when that's they sign not, it? Yeah, like, they don't know that that's not legally binding. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, I think for some people, it probably doesn't matter whether it's legally binding or yeah, not. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's like it's, a declaration of faith. Yes. But it's I like think, getting baptized. Yeah, but I think a lot of them think it is legally binding. Like, legally binding. Well, I mean, it's probably written like a legal document. The other thing it I need to contract yeah so i would assume yeah the other thing i need you to understand about cults in general is that it all breaks down to labor right like it all breaks down to free labor slave labor coerced labor labor on some level anytime i think about labor the best the best um like epiphany moment for like labor for me when i was like getting into cults and talking about cults with you and stuff was the um shiny happy people documentary Mm -hmm. talking about all the homeschool boys being in like a militia and like digging trenches and building like houses and churches and like these huge convention centers and stuff Mm -hmm. for nothing for like nothing and their parents just like you got to go do your time yes like that so see your numbers the thing that like broke the uh, that that's what made me understand the dedication of like physical labor yeah so sea org members do a lot of physical labor they do a lot of work are they the ones laying out his clothes for him Mm -hmm. so sea org members would be the ones maintaining the houses like doing all that stuff there's also like different organizations within like the sea organization the sea organization actually isn't an organization oh it falls under like the church of spiritual technologies is a scientology organization or rtc which is the Religious Technology Center, that's like a legal entity, like a Church of Scientology entity. Okay. There are entities. The Sea Org is not one of those entities. 
They are all basically volunteer based. It's really Scientology's slave labor force. Yeah. You are paid less than $50 a week. How do you get your bridges if you're only making $50 a week? (laughs) Is it free? Is that you can get it for free if you're in the Sea Org? However, Mm. a lot of people in the Sea Org are so busy working, they can't do the classes, they can't go up the bridge. And if you think being clear is the most important thing, but then none of the Sea Org, I mean, a lot of the Sea Org does go up the bridge. So, like, especially people really high up in the Sea Org have to be high up on the bridge, like at certain ranks, they wear. It's a paramilitary organization, so they wear uniforms. It's based on the na- Navy. They have ranks. Are there pictures of the uniforms? Yes. Let's look I at I need the... to see it. So it's just like a normal, like, sailor outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would assume this person was in the U.S. Navy. Yeah. <clears throat> like, if I saw these people on the street, I would assume that they were in their dress blues. Yeah. Yeah, so that... Somebody should, like, get them in trouble for like impersonating a police officer people ask about that all the time how are they not impersonating like military officers they are that's crazy and that's like dangerous and against the law mm-hmm. yeah so they so sea org members auditing going up the bridge a lot of them don't have time but you have to if you get really high up they do get it for free however if you try to leave the sea org mm-hmm. which you can't because, because of your contract right but people do Okay. And if you that we're gonna deep dive on Anytime the org another you day. You make that noise, I just know that there's so much. There's so much under there, I don't even know what to say. We have to deep dive the Sea Org another day because the Sea Org is where most of the abuses happen. Oh so most okay. of like the worst things that anyone has ever heard Scientology doing to people usually happens to Sea Org members. I think so I mean Scientology has been harmful to just parishioners and it's mm-hmm. harmful in a lot of different ways. The outright abuses that are like illegal happen to Sea Org members. And a lot of the ways that they've gotten around that for so many years is because these are the most dedicated Scientologists that have signed away their life and devoting it and all their lives after devoting it to Scientology. And so they don't report crimes to by the time they get out, realize they're not going to get cancer and die, realize they're not going to give everyone else cancer and die. Realize that the things that happened to them were illegal and report it to law enforcement. Could you it's imagine too long. A mental breakdown. Yeah, that's awful. Um, so if you leave, if you try to leave the Sea Org, they issue you what they call a freeloader's debt. So they back charge you for all your because Scientology you bridge, courses, you auditing, the bridge for free. Yeah, for free because labor means nothing. Right. So they they will try even to if you're going to you. stay inside Scientology, uh huh. Hey. Because it's not free. <laughs> because they need the money. Why do they need the money? Because they want it. I was say, what are they doing with this hoarded hoarding wealth? it? Is it like okay. the Hubbard family that's hoarding it? Like who mm. who is this money going to? Scientology, like okay, the, and the organization. Who has that debit card? David Miscavige, <laughs> the Sea Org, but they don't spend it. Um, a lot of what they do with the money is fair game people who speak out against Scientology and people who leave and like reveal a lot of these secrets. So fair game is a L. Ron Hubbard policy that he yeah. wrote down where I did not know that. Yes. Where he says you can utterly destroy critics of Scientology. And in fact, it's your obligation to utterly destroy them. So a lot of the money goes to like private investigators we and talk about and, this and ruin these people for the rest of our lives if we feel like it. Yes. Wow. So a lot of the money goes to that. And, and our next lives. Yes. A lot of the money is wow. hoarded and spent on just random things. And the reason they can do that is because of their tax exempt. I would say they're they're a church. Yes. So th- the Church of Scientology was established in 1954. Yeah. Three years later, it was granted tax exempt status by the U.S. because Hubbard like developed it as a religion. Like from, I would like to take this moment to just say all churches should not be like no church should be tax exempt. Yeah, tax all in the churches. My, in my like personal opinion, like yeah. and I grew up in a small country church that would like we used to put um, up in the front of our church. We used to have a board that had like the attendance last week, the attendance this week, and then like the tithe amount. 
mm-hmm. of each week so that we would know how much money was going to the church as our congregation. Our congregation was like a hundred people. Like it was small and like our tithing amount wasn't large and there wasn't ever like a, you obviously Christians want you to tithe. Like there there's tithing based in, based in your faith. That being said, we didn't feel predatory. Like there was never like an altar call for money. Like right. we did not have that in our church. And the reason why our church did that was so that we could see how much money was going to the church, so that we could be aware transparently where this money was going, what bank account it was in, who was spending it and where they were spending it. And a lot of our money went to helping people in the church, like pay electric bills when they needed it or pay for childcare or yeah. like we truly did that in the church I was raised in. Um, Scientology so design. So that's why I'm, I'm like, I don't understand why. Right. There's like, no transparency. The there's no. David Miscavige does spend a lot of money on himself. Like that other Sea Org members are expected to go without things. David Miscavige gets a lot of those things. Hmm. He benefits greatly from a lot of that. But like him personally. like Did L. Ron Hubbard also benefit similarly similarly okay. yeah him and his family did get like perks and benefits and was i mean his whole thing was getting rich like he so that's what i was money. wondering i was yeah. like what where but it's still it's all housed like david miscavige doesn't have personal finances do they have like billions of dollars yes. in the church of Scientology? it is estimated wow. that they have four to billions so they were given tax exempt exempt status three in years seven, after in 1957 yes but in 1967, the U.S. government stripped the tax exemption because they determined Scientology to be a business organization wow. that solely be- – that activities were commercial and was to the benefit of L. Ron Hubbard. Wow. So there so were they not have certain – No. I mean, they do. They do now. Oh so God. there were certain paper trails and stuff that made the IRS say, look, this one guy is benefiting from all of this. Yes. Yeah. After that. I think is when L. Ron Hubbard didn't have any personal finances anymore mm. because Scientology never recognized their lack of tax exemption. When their tax exemption was stripped, they just fixed it. They never paid taxes. <gasps> they stopped paying taxes. They, they protested it. They believed it was unlawful, illegal. They shouldn't have to pay taxes. That was ridiculous. We're a church. Yeah. They were like, this is crazy. For 25 years, <gasps> they did not I was pay expecting taxes. you to say it was like five. No. I was expecting, because everything happened so quickly in the 50s. Right. So for it to be like 50s, 52, 54, 57, 67, we can't be a church. We have to pay taxes. I was expecting like, okay, we got to fix this like right now. By like 1970, they're debt back taxes. No. Went. So they this were like the trying to fix it for 25 years. Good. The IRS they should have paid taxes. The IRS overstepped a little bit when they stripped its tax exemption. The government really thought that it was a predatory organization and oh. like a really bad thing because it was. And they tried the IRS agents tried to get Scientology shut down entirely. Oh, could you imagine a world with that work? Right. That would be so cool. Problem is, this is America. <laughs> and that's really hard to do yeah. to religions or corporations. Or cults. Or cults, because yeah. we have, like, the whole religious stuff that America has. It, it's almost impossible. And also it's capitalism. Yes. So the IRS overstepped, made Scientology really mad, and Scientology spent the next 25 years trying to blackmail. Oh, so were they fair gaming, like, yeah, the IRS? Yeah, they were fair gaming the U.S. government and the IRS. We're going to deep dive that. But what happened was they blackmailed individual irs agents so bad and they filed like upwards of 50 lawsuits against the irs could you imagine if you're just like this irs like secretary just like clacking away on your computer in the 60s uh-huh or 70s not or computer, 80s typewriter yeah i mean like and then being like fair game by the like, organization yeah. because you handled the paperwork from like this office to that office yeah that's unfair so and 1992, uh, they were able to vote on Scientology. Like, Scientology was continuously, like, appealing to get their tax-exempt status status back. In 92, yes. In 92, they voted to not reinstate it. Again, they had for 25 years. They were like, no, you are a business. You are, like, benefiting this one person. No. In 1993, 
Scientology did something right and blackmailed the right person. And in 1993, they voted to give Scientology their taxes. I have to know. I have to know who the lobbyist for Scientology is. There has I don't to know. be. Okay, so there. We're going to talk about that in a later episode. We're there gonna, are lobbyists. No, it's not oh. lobbyists, but we're going to. I'm going to tell you like what they did because they're. Scientology is one of the I, only... I assumed you didn't know. No, like, no, no. They did there's, a, there's a whole... There are all these... There's a lot to it. It's so in-depth. And Scientology is one of the only organizations that has successfully infiltrated the U.S. government. Wow. That's very dangerous. Like, yeah. They should be on, like, a like a domestic terrorism group. Like, honestly, that list. You would think. Hmm. You would think. So, they are recognized as a tax-exempt organization, but only because they blackmailed, like, the individual... Right Yes. Yeah. In France, they are seen as a business. And France tried to ban Scientology several times. And it hasn't worked, though. Germany is very uh, not friendly towards Scientology. They're a business. They're not allowed to try to claim religion. Good. All these countries have various opinions on Could Scientology. Could you imagine if the Germans were like, yeah, actually, aliens. <laughs> the Germans? <laughs> yeah. They're well, notoriously the Germans like are also like very sensitive to authoritarian groups. I wonder why. <laughs> well, I'm thinking they're, they're also very, very like um like like cut and dry. Yeah. Germans are just very like yeah, no, Germany is right or not. Germany like, and France not having it. Oh yeah, the do French not care. are too cynical. Yeah. To believe that you're gonna climb this bridge and be told mm -hmm. it's aliens. They'd be like, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. And L. Ron Hubbard uh was like criminally charged in a few different countries <gasps> for a few different things really? in regards to Scientology for like fraud and like well yeah all kinds of stuff. So we'll learn all about that when we deep dive out on Hubbard. Okay. So that's your how many people, very not brief overview. How many people are in Scientology? Right so now? what do you think? Like you would assume because it's of celebrities, worldwide. yeah, it's worldwide. They do yeah, they do have Scientology bases all over the world. They own a lot of property, very similar to the Mormons. Oh, of course. Scientology owns a lot of buildings. Do they think so that aliens are coming? Buildings. No. Is that a part of Because mm -hmm. Mormons hoard because of, like, they think there, there's an end time. Mormons, right? yeah, are an end times cult. Scientology is not really an end times cult. What a weird idea. Yeah. Um, is it like, is it like a, like a millions? So Scientology says they I have millions of millions members of worldwide. Followers. That's what I, they they fix. They've got me. Like, yeah, I would assume that. and they think upwards of ten million. Yeah. Okay. Um. Online, if you Google it, people estimate less than forty thousand. And that is a number that does not make sense. Aaron Smith Levin thinks that um, so Aaron Smith Levin has the YouTube channel growing up in Scientology. Yes. He was on an episode of Leah Remini's Scientology yes. in Aftermath. He did like research for a living after he <clears throat> left Scientology. He researched like Herbalife. Like he was one of the big people that did like a ton of research I into Herbalife. That. Um he's done a lot of research and like, come up with like off different of Lularo. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm not. not I'm yeah, saying yeah. Like, that like he does that kind of stuff. Yeah. But he's done a lot of research trying to estimate okay. how many Scientologists he thinks there are. How many does he think? He said he thinks that if they had a huge event, and because you, th there's no way to really know. There's no way. There's they can do estimations, but there's no records where they can okay. really look at it. He thinks that they held a big event and said L. Ron Hubbard has returned. Like he's come back. Okay. It would make every Scientologist who believes in the, in, world. the in the world who believes in Scientology would be like, oh my gosh, I have to go to this event. L. Ron Hubbard's back. I will get there. I will pay whatever money. Like it's such a big deal. He thinks that there, it would be really, really hard for Scientology to get 30,000 people there. Wow. Based on what he's run. How many people are in like the Sea Org? Surely Very those numbers few. exist. That like low thousands like not even 10 like wow maybe a thousand i don't even know really Very i really i really truly thought that there was millions of people they just Scientology. they just opened a new building in austin texas and david miscavige was there they had a big event i'm actually kind of shocked that texans are receptive oh, to Scientology. <laughs> yeah well it's austin still texas <laughs> yeah like they just seem like the type of people who'd be like, 
not in, not in this area. This is God's yeah. country because they're very like that. So they were saying to expect like thousands, tens of thousands of people to come to this new building opening in okay. Texas, in Austin. Uh, people went there to protest and said there were maybe 400 people there. Wow. Like maybe. So Scientology is struggling. Very much. I mean, yeah. That makes very, sense. Very, very much. I mean, it's been going on since the 50s. <laughs> people are reaching these high things to be told to go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. You reach this high and it's like actually aliens and yeah. actually you you made it all up. Yeah. The internet, Give us more money. Yeah, the internet has been a big problem for Scientology. Oh, I believe it. So ever since there was an ease to spread information and for whistleblowers to like share their stories, it's been really easy for people to kind of unravel things even when you're in Scientology. And then so, you have people on TikTok being like, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not supposed to listen to or research anything negative about Scientology, but like how are you gonna when you're scrolling tiktok not watch yeah. the video that pops up of someone talking about your religion yeah i would yeah you watch it man i thought this i knew this would probably make me a little sad but i didn't think how sad but now i'm like really sad it gets worse can't wait <laughs> let's, let's go just so you know we yeah, haven't wait. even talked about the sad stuff oh like not even close but there is sad stuff we talked about oh <laughs> no no <laughs> she just said no no, no, we didn't. Unfortunately, that's so sad. That was all the good stuff about Scientology, and I'm literally not kidding or exaggerating. I know. <laughs> I can, I know you really well. I know you're not. <laughs> Those were like the corny. Parts. These are the pros. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the con list. Yeah, yeah. So all of that to say, what Scientologists actually believe actually doesn't even matter. To me, in like my conversations about Scientology, so it does matter to me. Yeah, it's just like a co completely know nothing or of Scientology. Yeah, it's interesting. <clears throat> it's interesting, but it doesn't matter to me in like the destructive cult conversation and like the harms Scientology is causing. It can maybe on some level help us understand when we talk about how like the really bad things that it does in the heart. I think putting a framework but, to it. Yeah. To, to most things. Yeah. Can be really helpful. Yeah. Like I didn't know anything about the children of God cult until mm -hmm. we read the book, um, uncultured. Yeah. And when I was reading that, it did help me to know that they were like, like biblical based. They were like this yeah. sort of thing. They were that sort of thing. They also had a similar celebrity like pedestaling they mm -hmm. also had like a similar barrier of entry of labor and time and money yeah um and it those things in practice make sense with what i know of certain christian right. sex does that make sense yeah. so to like know that they were jesus faith kind of faith made like did help yeah, it can, I think it does like it help does in the sense help. to provide context. I think that the context helps me understand the type of people who would be a Scientologist. Yeah. But when I say that, like, those are the pros, and that's the good part. Like, you're not joking. Yeah, the beliefs are the least of my worries, the least problematic parts of Scientology. I literally you can believe don't care. whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean by like, I literally like. That's fine. I think so I just need to believing know Believing in aliens I, and engrams are fine. I think I just need to understand the type of brain that would believe that for that long mm -hmm. to, to such a high barrier of entry. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to understand that. I think you might. I think when we talk more about, like, the abuses and stuff, mm. that might that might provide some insight into a lot of that. But, yeah. That makes me sad. Er, it gets worse. Love that. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, next time we're going to learn all about L. Ron Hubbard. And what led him? Yeah, I feel like a like a radio show. <laughs> Tune in next time for a Scientology conversation. That's not. <laughs> uh, I have to know about him now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hooked. You got me. Yeah. Not that I you you got me. Like <laughs> not that I was on the fence, but now I really feel like yeah. I need to know. We'll do L. Ron Hubbard. We'll do David Miscavige. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what we'll do next. Can you talk to me things. about? How Shelly Miscavige is like missing. Yeah, we'll do we that in there. the David Miscavige. Okay. Yeah. I have to know about that. Yeah. My friend Tori is like very bought in on her yeah. being missing. Yep. It's so crazy. I'd love to know. I don't know anything about it. She mentioned it to me and I was like, 
Oh, she's like missing. Like I figure somebody knew where she was. No, she hasn't been seen in a very long time. Crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, can't wait. Can't I actually know. can't wait. This is not. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that conversation. Make sure you like and subscribe for more culty content and Scientology content. We've got an LRH deep dive coming at you. And if you want to know what else is going on on my channel, I am doing some reaction videos to some fundamentalist evangelical content creators and influencers and some deep dives into some culty leaders in that space as well. So stay tuned for those. We'll see you next time on No Culty Vibes. Bye.